Welcome back to my channel everyone. I'm Charles from Charles Hand Photography. Today we're going to discuss the histogram on our camera. What is the histogram? What does it show us? How can it help us take better photos? Now this tutorial is aimed at beginner photographers because when we start out in photography a lot of the information that we see on our camera is hard to understand. Now I have already done a few tutorials dealing with how to meter for your subject, what white balance is, how to set it up, the type of picture profiles to use for your camera. And today we're going to talk about the histogram. Where can we find the histogram on our menu when we're looking at our image? Well for Canon cameras all we have to do is press the info button on the back of our camera here and the histogram will pop up. For Nikon cameras, if it hasn't been set up for you already, we go into Menu, Playback Menu, and in the Playback Options, we right click on it and we scroll down to Overview. And if it hasn't been ticked, we scroll across to the right and make sure that the tick box is ticked. We click OK. Now, when we click the Playback button, all we have to do is scroll up or down until we see this display and it shows us our picture with all the settings plus a little histogram here. What does the histogram shows for our photo? How do we interpret it? How do we read it? If we look to the left of it that's where all our blacks are and the histogram goes from black to white. So we have blacks, we have shadows, in the center we have exposure or our midtones then we have our highlights, then we have our whites. Now there is no perfect histogram. As you can see in this histogram display here, this is roughly what a perfect histogram would look like. But to tell you the truth, this rarely happens in the real world. I was looking back on my images and I really struggled to find a histogram that looked fairly close to what some people call a perfect histogram which is a nice mountain type right in the center of our exposure or our midtones. Most of the time it can be pushed to the right, it can be pushed to the left because all this does is shows us where all our information is. So if I'm taking a photo of a sunrise the information will be pushed to the right but if I'm taking a photo of the Milky Way at night the image is very dark, so most of the data, most of that information will be pushed to the left. And we use the histogram to actually gauge our exposure, whether we are overexposed or we are underexposed. That is the simplest way of explaining. So we use the histogram as a guide and we look at it and say, okay, well, we can increase our exposure a little bit so that we get more light into our image to get a correct exposure. But at night, if I'm trying to get that correct histogram, like a nice little mountain in the middle, I will have overexposed my image. So after a while, you'll find that your histogram just gives you a guide and it's up to you to try to look at it saying, okay, well, for this shot, this is the histogram that I want. You don't have to rely on saying, I need that perfect mountain and I'm going to work until I get that perfect mountain. Or some people will tell you that oh, when you look at your histogram you've got to make sure that all that information is pushed to the right. Well if you try to do that at night you will end up with an overexposed image. The same if you're in a very dark area like in a forest situation or if you're shooting like a nightscape in the city you'll find that because it's dark all our information or well, most of it will be to the left of halfway. That does not mean that we don't have a correct exposure. So I will show you now some photos and this will give you an idea of the type of histogram that displays for these situations. Now all these images are just raw files. They haven't been edited because if I'd edited these images then the histogram would have moved. So the histogram that you see would have been the histogram that I saw when I took these photos. So now let's take a look at these photos and the relevant histogram. So this is a sunrise shot that I took and you can see the sun peeking through here. 
and I find sunrise and sunsets are about the hardest time to actually get a correctly exposed image because sometimes you might feel that okay well I just need to increase the exposure a bit or it might look a little bit too bright and I will just underexpose it. I find when you're learning photography, when you're learning to take photos like this, I actually teach and recommend people to slightly underexpose your image because if you underexpose your image you can always recover the detail, recover a bit of the shadows in post-processing but if you overexpose your image that detail is gone. So this looks quite a nice photo. We have our blacks, shadows, exposure or midtones, highlights and whites. And you can see I've got a little bit of blacks, a little bit of whites, but most of our detail is in the exposure, midtones area and our highlights. When we control our exposure, so increasing exposure or decreasing our exposure, all we're doing is sliding our histogram left or right. We cannot control what we see vertically. When you look here, you can actually see that the blues here are peaked out. This just shows you the intensity of that color. You cannot control that. In post-processing, yes, you can actually reduce the intensity of the blues if you want to. So don't worry about the vertical aspect of your histogram. All you're worried about is the lengthways, whether it's pushed to the left or pushed to the right. This is a very close up shot of some water hens nesting. And you can see there's a little chick behind the parent and they're sitting on some eggs, they're just about ready to hatch. It looks a very even image because it was taken on a very cloudy day. This was the only photo that I could find going back more than two years with this sort of perfect histogram, as some people call it, a nice mountain shape in the middle. The only reason I got a histogram like that was because it was a very cloudy day and all the colors were quite muted. There was no bright area, there was not too much dark area, so most of the information was in the center of the histogram. Now take a look at the next image here. This is a waterfall in Mount Tambourine in the southeast of Queensland. Now this image was quite hard to expose because you can see we have the waterfall which is very bright but we're in a forest situation so we have a lot of shadow areas so you've got to make sure that you don't blow out the highlights of the waterfall but still get some of the shadows from the, the forest so this is the histogram and this is correctly exposed can you see that most of our detail is in the blacks and shadows but it's slowly tapering off all the way to the whites and it's just about touching the right if I had tried to expose my image slightly more so increase the exposure I would have blown out the waterfall your histogram is a guide to what you are seeing so what the camera is seeing I had to juggle I had to say okay well I've got to lift up my shadows a little bit but making sure that I don't blow out the waterfall because this is the most important part of my image so this was taken at O'Reilly's late last year when I took a few days break with my family. It was getting late in the afternoon and we got a lot of cloud cover but I really like this image because there was a lot of haze, a bit of rain in the background and there was just a tree banks and a couple of trees just sticking out. To me it just was a very interesting image to take. And look at this histogram here. It's all over the place. It's just up and down like a yo-yo from blacks to white. But can you see we have very bright areas, we have very dark areas, and we've got a lot of mid-tone areas. Having a histogram like this shows us that all our information is just spread across the whole range of our histogram. And a lot of time when I'm photographing landscapes, this is the sort of histogram that I'm going to get on days like that. So this next image here was taken in the blue hour in the city of Brisbane. And it was slowly getting dark but look we've got a very dark sky the foreground here of the river is a little bit dark but in the center here all our buildings are quite bright and this is another time when we have to be very careful of how we're exposing our image because if I want to brighten up the sky I would blow out all the detail of these buildings two-thirds of our data is in the shadow area and it's peaking so it's showing that it's quite bright, the colors are quite saturated in that area. 
But then our mid-tones or our exposure, our highlights and whites, they're just flatlining and they're actually touching the whites. For this image, there was nothing I could do about it. I could have reduced the exposure, but in this case, I was willing to say, okay, I'm going to accept some of the image is going to be overexposed, but it was just a fraction, probably about 10%. And that was the bright lights in the buildings. Sometimes you have to give and take. You have to say, okay, well, I'm willing to accept a little bit of blown highlights to get 90% of my image correctly exposed. Now, something to be mindful about when we're taking photos and we're not looking at a histogram is our eyes can trick us because if you've set in your camera that the display is brighter or you want to dim down the display then this is where you've got to be very careful because you've got to rely on our histogram i set the brightness of my display to zero now at night time when I'm taking photos of the Milky Way because the LCD screen is so bright I will actually reduce the brightness just so that my eyes don't hurt when I'm actually looking at the image. So I have to be mindful of that when I'm looking at the image or if you're in a forest and the LCD screen is too dark you might say okay well I'm going to increase the brightness of my LCD screen so I can actually see the photo better. So if you're relying on what you're seeing on your LCD screen without looking at your histogram, you might think, okay, well, the exposure is correct. Forgetting that you've either reduced the brightness of your LCD screen or increased the brightness of your LCD screen. This is where you have to use your histogram. And I rely on my histogram to tell me whether my images are overexposed or underexposed something that I teach people when they're learning photography is that it is better to underexpose your image slightly than to overexpose it. You can always fix an underexposed image. You cannot fix an image that is overexposed. If this video tutorial has been of benefit to you, give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate if you subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you've got any comments or questions about using the histogram, leave it in the comment box below and I'll answer your questions. Stay safe, enjoy your photography and I'll see you next time.